good morning and it's good to go and then we got this it's crazy we are two crazies from south africa this is Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now full time living and sailing on our new home, Sisu. It just whacks us, like seriously. And there's the island. It's not even, we're not even far from the island yet. But I think it's coming from that point, coming around that point, and also coming around this point. So it, the, the two winds meet over here. <laughs> so we're on our way to Buscada. Buscada. It is. It was a previous. Well, most of these places were Greek before, but they claim that one very much Greek before, and they even make wine on Buscada. And Pietro is making for us new coffee. And here's the coffee. It is very cool up here. Cold. Not cool. It's actually cold. What's that? Get your jacket? I think. I think it's jacket time. A very, very beautiful morning. So we're going to go through the Dardanelles very soon. If you look here. This is the Dardanelles here. it before we go through because I think we will cross it at the very point where we can quickly cross it. Because we're going to go through the Dardanelles very soon, but we have the Genoa on the reef already because it just goes crazy. We decided to cross this TSS, and you can see that big boat just passed now. That one is on its way over there, that one is at anchor, and there's a little fishing boat that's coming as well. So what we normally do, and it's also what you require to do, is go 90 degrees, cross 90 degrees. So I'm just checking again that little fishing boat. I think we need to go a little bit more to, to port. So let's go maybe five, 10 degrees more, so that we can go at his back. We are about to enter the Dardanelles again and I plotted the route through there on the right hand side of the, of the Dardanelles but you see it's a very narrow canal and it's basically connecting the Aegean Sea with the Marmara Sea and there is the Black Sea and we're going to try and sail through it so let us see how that works out we don't have our main so we don't need to worry about the main we only got the Genoa up and we're not doing too bad we're doing it about seven knots of course we will very soon get also the current going for us we're going now past these big towers again I think they're busy building a bridge here. This one, it is only ferries that's taking people between the two sides. The Asian side on that side and the European side on this side. This is such a relaxing sail. No sea state, flat water, 20 knots of wind. Dive ferries again. 
and little fishing boats and we've been called over the radio that the TSS management thought that we will be in that big ship's way and it is a big ass boat that one and it's doing something like 18 knots down here so we made it under sail here's the, here's the entrance to the Dardanelles we wanted to anchor here and it looks like here's some sand and some grass but look at that view but as you can see it's pretty rolly here and the wind is coming straight from there so there's no protection here really okay this was a first for us we came in almost like that guy and you have to drop your anchor like in that corner there and then come all the way back and I think he's going to cross now our anchor now see how that boat is floating drifting the wind is coming from this direction here very on the nose so it's very very tricky and it's 20 knots wind well, luckily our neighbor came and put some fenders out because we did not anticipate to come in here um, but it was good and then the sturkey sky helped us these guys have bow thrusters <laughs> so it works <laughs> how did you experience this anchorage <laughs> it was very very small very confined hectic winds and <laughs> crazy <laughs> and we almost bumped this twice the back here <laughs> Yeah, so, so you have to drop the anchor and then you cannot let it drag so you have to like let it go 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 and then at one point you need to say right now I need to test whether the anchor has set or not and while you saw <laughs> negotiate this well, boat no, while you negotiate the wind this boat and the other ones <laughs> it's just like it was Crazy. it was our first time but yeah, yeah we managed well to get done. in here well yeah done. no well done to you we did well done yeah. wind picked up so I put another line so there's now one line over there I've got the stern line also another line going all the way to the corner over there you have to be careful to make sure that all three of these lines all three of these lines must get taut at the same time so if one of them is taking more strain than the others then you are actually defeating the purpose South Africa. We're going to see a famous place, I think. 
Looks we, like it was rebuilt recently, but let's see. We haven't done any history on it yet yeah. or research, but we will definitely. And this is a very cheap round. 10 yeah. Turkish lira per person. Boscada Castle is one of the best preserved castles of Turkey. However, it was formerly also known as Tenedos before the 15th century. They speculate that it dates back to before the 14th century and it was possibly built by the Phoenicians, the Romans or the Venetians. Since the island is located at the mouth of the Dardanelles, so close to the mainland, it has been open to invasions throughout the centuries and has changed hands a couple of times. All these civilizations that lived there felt safe under the protection of this big castle. However, the castle was completely demolished after the War of Chiogia between Venice and Genoa on the advice of the Pope. So over there, that wall just before the marina, that was called the Outer Castle or the Outer Fort, which about 98 people lived there. There was 50 miles, about 25 houses and this is part of the of the not the inner inner but the middle fortress and then this one too so this one here before the big fortress was called the dungeons so all the dignitaries that was put into exile would say political issues maybe were put here in these dungeons. When Mehmet II of the Ottoman Empire had conquered the island in 1455, he rebuilt the castle on those ruins. In July 1656, during the Cretan War, a Venice fleet captured the castle. But Ottomans under Mehmet Pasha recaptured the castle again in August 1657. Soon after the reconquest, the castle underwent a major restoration and a second rebuild was carried out in 1815 by the Sultan Mahmud II and it has kept that appearance ever since. There are two sections. The first one is the bailey, which is a courtyard within the external walls of the castle and then the citadel, which is the core of the castle. Within the citadel, there are various cisterns, an arsenal, an infirmary a water well, a mosque and various rooms. The castle is located on the northeastern end of the island and was surrounded or still is surrounded by a ditch which had once been full of water and the entrance to the castle was via a suspended bridge but it is now replaced with an awesome wooden bridge. It is an absolute must see so whenever you go to Boscada pop into this castle it is well worth it. <laughs> oh, wacht. Peter, we staan daar echt oorkant mee. Dan praat hij zachtjes toch? Dan praat hij naar je muur toe. Kun je mij hoor? Nee, ik hoor jou. Van waar je daar staat. <laughs> nee, ik kan ik niet hoor. Nee. <laughs> so, so last night when we tried to come in, we were wanted to find the anchor spot here and we saw this yellow generator building we called it the generator building so there's this nice view of the castle it's a little town on its own with a population of 11 So many little streets, so many choices to do. Should we go there? Should we go there? Coming heavy from that side. 
coming at 15 to 18 knots, casting to 20. So I'm going to use one of the long lines for a slip from one of these two cleats over here all the way to that side. So if the wind is pushing like this, we find and as we go forward, we will actually be pulled that way. On one of those ones there, and then Pedro can just release it as we go to the anchor, and then that's another game. Okay, so Frick has taken it off over there, and we're going to prepare for a slip on this one here, and he's going to pass me the line can now. Catch this one. Let's see if I can catch with one hand. You got it? So Pedro is now re reducing the, the the stand on line or the line that's going to be fixed and then this one we're going to put it behind that one behind the pillar and this one is now very short and she's preparing it for a slip so on that one it's very easy now to slip hopefully <laughs> um, if it if it does get knotted there then we in some trouble yeah, it's very old and very rusty so this short line I think we need to lose <laughs> when we want to take off the gang plank or the gang way so because if that one goes then a plank drops in the water and I cannot get back onto Sisu so I just put it into a stern and making sure that we don't crash into the side, very important. Okay, now I can take the long line off. Okay, so we got our friend, he's helping. And even start to thinking of raising a sail. I see that Fountain Peugeot that left before us and a mono left before us <laughs> by motoring. I think 22 knots of wind is too much. Okay. Our sail is up. Peter is still busy fighting the fenders. <laughs> Sorry. She's working very hard today and i just want to make sure we can clear that island but i think it's time to test our wings the sail is flapping a little bit you can see that's the island i'm worried about we will pass it our knee line is okay course of our ground is good That boat over there is going past us. It is somewhere here. These are the two boats I'm talking about. I think. Look at that. I think. With 6.6 .6 knots and 24 knots of wind. Who wants an engine? So we've got our sails up. Mud cleat is there and you will not be able to see it but there's a catamaran and a mono right in front of us and they don't sail not sure why it is perfect weather for sailing and it's downwind you have to do it before you can get f off That's f thing. off sisu i really don't want to do this <laughs> this is my 40th birthday <laughs> wine courtesy of Rick, our good Australian friend, and I've been forced to do this. If it goes wrong, I'm not responsible. Et ça Are we ready? <laughs> you have to be... I told you it's not real champagne. Maybe it's... <laughs> oh, it doesn't want to go. Is that? Look, I just... Are you chipped?